Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So to introduce this video, let me tell you a little story. It was a clear morning on April 19th, 1995, and I had a meeting with my client in his three-story glass office building in Northwest Oklahoma City that morning. And as it turned out, we had a clear line of sight to downtown Oklahoma City. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, we were jolted out of our chairs by a very loud explosion. Yes, we heard and felt the bomb go off at 9.02 a.m. here in Oklahoma City. It was surreal. Just as we heard the explosion, the floor-to-ceiling glass windows of my client's office bowed inward way in but somehow did not break from the blast shockwave that hit our building. Yeah, We were many miles away and you could barely see downtown but we did notice that there was some smoke seemed to be coming off one of the buildings. And then the phone rang and it was my client's wife calling to tell us the news. The Alfred P. Murrah building in downtown Oklahoma City had been destroyed apparently by a truck bomb. Today the Oklahoma City National Memorial and Museum commemorates that event which is indelibly etched into Oklahoma City history and the attraction has become a destination for visitors from around the world. So, think about where you're living now. If someone asked you, what are a few absolute must-see attractions or events in your city? You know, the places that any tourist or newcomer coming to town would like to see. You know, what would you come up with? Can you name a few? For starters, let's say you live in Seattle. Well, there's the Space Needle. That's a no-brainer. Or San Francisco, the Golden Gate Bridge. Or in St. Louis, you want to see the Gateway Arch. Or in San Antonio, the Alamo. And let's talk about New York. We'll take your pick there. Statue of Liberty, Empire State Building, Times Square, etc. The point is that every city has a few attractions. Maybe a historical event like the Oklahoma City bombing. Or perhaps famous architectural structures that over time have become synonymous with that city. Oklahoma City is no different. And in this video, I'm going to play tour guides. Guide and review a handful of must-see attractions that are quintessential Oklahoma City and should not be missed. Hello everyone, my name is Len Taggart. I'm a realtor here in Edmond, Oklahoma, and I help people every day that are considering a move to Oklahoma City. Maybe you're watching this video because you're thinking about you know, making a visit here, perhaps to scout out the place before making the big move and you want to learn more about the town in advance. Your interest has actually been piqued by the low cost of living, which I talk about here up here in this video. If you'd like to know more about Oklahoma City and what it's like to live here, give me a call or send me a text or send me an email and let's chat. I'd love to help you and really answer any questions you may have. So historically, when most people think of Oklahoma in general, what comes to mind for many are the typical images of the American West. Things like cowboys and cattle drives, riding, roping, and rodeos, six shooters and stagecoaches, pioneers and wagon trains, Native Americans and teepees and buffaloes. All of these things contributed to the place we call Oklahoma today. Yep, we're proud of our Western heritage, and so what better place to kick off our tour than a visit to the National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum. This iconic museum, which opened in 1955, collects, preserves, and exhibits an internationally renowned collection of Western art and artifacts while sponsoring dynamic educational programs to create continuing interest in the enduring legacy of the American West. If you want to know all about the Old West, this is the place you start. Over 10 million visitors from all over the world have visited this place, and for good reason. If you like Western art, including works by Remington and Russell, it's got it. If you like Western frontier and Native American artifacts, it's got it. If you like antique firearms, you're in luck. If rodeo is your thing, it's got that cover too. Also has Native American dwellings are featured here. Anything you can think of regarding the history and culture of the American West is there. From impressive art collections to captivating exhibits, you'll be transported back in time and the Old West will come alive. Now, of course, if you're coming to Oklahoma City to really fit in, you'll need some different duds. You know, things like cowboy hats and boots. So what better place to send you than historic Stockyard City, just south of Interstate 40 next to downtown. Founded in 1910, the Oklahoma National Stockyards Company began operating as a public livestock market, followed shortly thereafter by the construction of several meat packing plants. And voila, Stockyard City was born, and a supporting community sprung up around the meatpacking operation. Today, it remains the world's largest stalker and feeder cattle market. Much of the original business district remains, maintaining the rugged western flavor it's always been known for. Need western gear? Shop for your favorite boots and jeans at Langston's, which has been providing western wear to Oklahoma for over 100 years. Get your cowboy hat down the street at Shorty's Cowboy Hattery. For all you horse lovers out there, stop in and pick out your favorite saddle at Mike's Custom Saddle Shop. And after all that shopping, you're going to be hungry, so mosey on over to the Anchor Business in Stockyard City, the oldest continuously operating restaurant in Oklahoma City, the Cattleman's Steakhouse, which opened for business in 1910. Dining at Cattleman's is an experience unto itself that immerses you in the cowboy culture. Countless cowboys, ranchers, and celebrities throughout history have eaten here, all adding to its legendary status. As you're chowing down on your favorite steak, soak up the nostalgia of the place. The walls are adorned with photographs and memorabilia that tell the story of the restaurant's rich history. I also dare you, 
try out the lamb fries, aka Rocky Mountain oysters. Google it if you don't know what I'm talking about. The ownership of the place changed hands in 1945, supposedly all on the roll of the dice in a high stakes dice game. I don't know about that, but what I am sure about is that the food there is really, really good and you will not leave hungry. The next stop is the one I mentioned at the outset, the Oklahoma City National Memorial and Museum, which stands as a tribute to the victims of the devastating 1995 bombing, which tragically killed 168 people, <sighs> including 19 children that were in a daycare facility on the first floor of the building. I'll warn you in advance that going there is a somber, moving experience for many. The attraction consists of two parts, the memorial and the museum. And the centerpiece of the memorial is a reflecting pool, which is flanked by two gates on either end. The 901 AM gate on one end, and which signifies the minute before the event, and the 903 gate signifying the minute after the blast. Alongside the pool is the survivor tree, which is an American elm, which somehow, miraculously, survived the blast. The tree has become the branded symbol of the attraction, and it represents the indomitable spirit of the Oklahoma City community, which really rallied together uh, in unimaginable ways after the event. I'll never forget it. The outside memorial also features the field of empty chairs, and here you'll see rows of chairs, one for each life lost in the bombing. Each chair bears the name of the victim, and you'll notice 19 of the chairs are smaller in scale, representing the, the 19 victims that were children. Just horrific. Inside the museum, you'll find yourself immersed in stories, exhibits, and articles that chronicle the events of April 19th. The museum offers a comprehensive and respectful exploration of the tragedy and its aftermath. From the history leading up to the bombing to the stories of the survivors and first responders, every exhibit is well done and offers a deeper understanding of the impact the event had on Oklahoma City and the strength that emerged from the tragedy. On a more lighthearted note, let's head over to Bricktown, a revitalized former warehouse district in Oklahoma City that's just east of downtown, that's now filled with a ton of restaurants, nightlife, and family-friendly entertainment options. Modeled after the Riverwalk in San Antonio, the Bricktown Canal is the anchor attraction and winds throughout the Bricktown area and serves as the focal point of all Bricktown activities. The best way to experience the, the Bricktown really is to take a 40-minute water taxi cruise along the canal, and during the trip, you'll get a glimpse of a number of key Bricktown entertainment options, including the Chickasaw Bricktown ballpark where the AAA affiliate of the Los Angeles Dodgers, the Oklahoma City Dodgers play, and Brickopolis, a family-themed venue with miniature golf, an arcade, and a climbing wall among other things. Heyday Entertainment is also nearby and it offers a fun-filled bowling experience for the family. Or check out the latest flick at the Harkins Theater. Now if you're hungry, you can check out a number of restaurant options including the Bricktown Brewery, Abuelo's, Earl's Barbecue, Sonic, and Toby Keith's Bar and Grill to name a few. The area features a vibrant nightlife as well with live music venues, bars, and clubs that offer a lively atmosphere that'll keep you entertained well into the night. At the far eastern end of the canal, don't miss the chance to check out the Land Run Monument. This larger-than-life collection of 47 dark bronze statues is spread out across a distance of 365 feet and commemorates the 50,000 or so people that participated in the Land Run of 1889 that settled central Oklahoma. April 22nd, 1889 was a wild, chaotic day, but in less than 24 hours, the town of Oklahoma City was born. Amazingly, get this, growing from zero to a population of 10,000 in less than 12 hours. Check out this video here if you'd like to know more about the land run. And finally, to wrap things up, let's get high. No, not that kind of high. Come on, people. I'm referring to getting high literally, as in altitude. High by wrapping up your Oklahoma City visit by having dinner at Vast Restaurant, which sits atop the tallest building in the state, the Devon Energy Tower. At 50 stories tall, the building was completed in 2012, dominating the Oklahoma City skyline and visible for miles around. Having worked in the tower from 2012 to 2018, I can attest to the stunning views from the upper floors. With the sun setting in the west, you can easily see the wind turbine blades turning away on the horizon, 60 miles to the west. Check out this pic I took from my office. That's the top of the adjacent 30-story Chase Building in downtown. Perched at the top of the building is Vast Restaurant, which offers jaw-dropping panoramic views of downtown Oklahoma City and beyond. The floor-to-ceiling windows provide an unparalleled vantage point, allowing you to take in the cityscape from a whole new perspective. Whether it's the twinkling lights at night or the vibrant energy of the city during the day, the view alone is worth the visit. By the way, pro tip, go at night.
It's really cool. Vast offers a memorable dining experience and features a mix of culinary delights ranging from perfectly cooked steaks to fresh seafood dishes and even innovative vegetarian options. And don't forget to save room for their outstanding desserts that are as visually stunning as they are delicious. Dining at Vast is sure to leave a lasting impression. So that wraps up our tour of Oklahoma City's must-see attractions. From the National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum to the Oklahoma City National Memorial and Museum and the vibrant experiences in Stockyard City and Bricktown. And wrapping it all up with a fantastic meal and a panoramic view of it all from high up in the sky at Vast, the city offers something for everyone. By all means, come check us out. You'll be glad you did. And speaking of checking things out, if your interests are in possibly moving here and not just visiting, I would encourage you to reach out to me to connect via phone, text, or email. My contact information is shown down below. I'd love to meet you and answer all of your questions about this place that I've called home, believe it or not, for over 60 years. I go into a lot more detail about the pros and cons of this place in these videos which are shown here. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for more information on Oklahoma City, my hometown. I make these videos every week and your support helps keep me encouraged to continue making these things. As always, let me know in the comments below if there's any other noteworthy attractions I've left off the list. I'm sure there is. That's it for this installment. Stay tuned for other videos I've got coming your way very soon. Take care everyone. Bye for now. We'll talk soon.